Making selections is a large, probably one of the biggest parts of Photoshop. I'm on that elliptical marquee tool and right now the feather, which is a control panel option, is set to zero. That means it'll be a hard edge selection. If I want it to be softer, then I can either feather it before I do it or after I do it. 15 pixels. I'll make my selection outward and then I'll make an adjustment. So let's go to levels and I then go and do something like something like that. Let me do it one more time. This time let's do 50 pixels. And then we'll do our levels and then we'll make an adjustment. You see how the adjustment is soft around the edges? See how that edge is super soft? It's not a hard line between the stars and the moon. Feathering softens your selection. So we already found one of the easiest ways, object selection tool, click, got the moon selected, great. Now why would I wanna select something? Let's keep that selected for a second. Let's go back and open up a different photo because in Photoshop, you can have more than one photo open at a time. Here's guy on a mountain with a sunset or sunrise and here's um, the moon. Take the moon, not the whole sky, just the moon over to this photo. Photo. Copy, paste. There it is. Photoshop automatically creates layers when you paste, so therefore I can always move that moon around and more importantly, make it smaller. We have the background, which is the original photo always, and the layer that we just created. We can turn that layer on and off. We can make the opacity less so it's less opaque, therefore we can see through it. We can also, if there were more of these two, I could even put one behind the other. So you can rearrange the stacking order of your layers if you want something in front. I just want to take the moon, make it smaller, so it looks like he's holding it or at least grabbing at it. Select it. I want to take the layer and scale it down. Edit, free transform, command T. We'll take any layer and make a selection of it. So just that's just the whole layer. You can grab a corner and scale it. And I don't even have to tell you to hold down the shift key anymore because now it scales proportionally by default. Now I can't do this because his head would be that good. Just because you can do something doesn't mean it looks real. That moon doesn't match the scene. Let's try something else. It's happening at night. And therefore, if we were to do a paste, because it's still in the clipboard, and we were to Command T, free transform, and scale it down, it's not realistic yet, but at least it'll be closer to being realistic in this sky. Now, this one's still too bright for this kind of sky, and of course, it still positions off and all that, but at least I can get this closer than the other one. How do I tell Photoshop I'm done? Well, there's a big check mark in the control panel right there. Use your move tool, that's why it's called the move tool, to move it around and still go back to free transform and scale it. You can still do any of those things. We can maybe drop the opacity down, kind of make it look more realistic, kind of blend it in a little more. This can look more realistic way more fast, way, way faster than this ever will. So if I turn that off, the moon goes away, turn it on, the moon's there, but the background is untouched. If I were to grab a paintbrush and I were to start painting with black paint, now notice the paint is less opaque because the whole layer is 62% opacity. But if I turn that layer off, it doesn't affect the background because the paint is only on that layer. I want to add some text to the photo. If I grab my type tool, which is the letter T, and I click anywhere on the photo, it's going to put some sample text. I can change that sample text while it's highlighted to whatever I want. Then I can, like I would with a word processor or any other text-based application, I can highlight it. I can change the font to get some heavy fonts here. Let's make the size bigger, 200 points. What color do I want it? Well, there's a color picker right now, it's purple. Then it will come up with a color picker and I can make it any color in the spectrum. I can go find the color. I can type in values for colors. I can even use the eyedropper once I move out of this window and sample one of the colors that's already here. So I can get that blue from the sky in the upper left corner. The text came in. I can grab the move tool and move it around because it's a layer called beach. I wanna put that text in front of him. Turn off beach for a second. Let's go to the background and let's go to my select objects thing again. I'm just gonna drag it around this guy and it will make a selection of that guy. I'm now going to copy that selection, not to another photo, but to a new layer. Layer, new layer via copy. Command J. So that puts him onto its own layer and I still have the word beach on the back of him. We have the beach layer, layer one, which we'll call this guy, and we have background. So all I have to do is just drag beach below guy, and now it's in front of him. Bye, everybody.